very big good morning to you, church, and we welcome you to worship here at Woods Beach Salvation Army. And today is Palm Sunday, and as the song has just glorified, the King is here. Today we're going to be focusing on Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. And more importantly, how Palm Sunday is the start of a very, very significant week in the Christian calendar, and that is Holy Week. Together we're going to be unpacking one very important concept of this Palm Sunday, and that is to look. As this meeting goes on, we're going to be unpacking just what that means for us, just what it meant for Jesus, and just what it will mean for us in the future coming this Holy Week. So, we thank you for joining us this morning, and we pray that God's blessing will be upon you as we explore Palm Sunday together. Before we continue in our worship, though, and before we discuss anything further, let's just share a word of prayer together. Father God, we just want to thank you for your glorious Son, Jesus, and all that he has done and all that he will continue to do for us. As we look at Palm Sunday, the significance of the triumphal entry, Lord, we just pray that your Spirit's presence will be upon us, upon those watching at home, and upon all of your people this morning. We pray all these things in your precious name. Your name, Lord, that is above every name. Amen. Amen. As it said, friends, we do find it a huge blessing that you join us each and every week, and we just want to thank you for your steadfastness in staying with us all of these weeks. But we're going to continue to worship together, and we're going to be worshiping through a couple of songs in a row here this morning. We're going to be worshiping through the song Hosanna, Praise It Is Rising. Following this glorious song, we're going to be singing at home and in our hearts, of course, Crown Him With Many Crowns. But as these songs play, friends, I just encourage you just to sing these songs out loud, to sing them in your hearts, and to radiate the message these songs glorify. Let's continue worshiping together. Hosanna. Praise is rising.
as the ethos of the Salvation Army, may we just extend our hands to your people and extend our hearts to you. We just pray for our mission here at this core and that we may touch lives in what we do. We just want to pray for ourselves right now, Lord God, and the heart's desires that are in us right now. Lord God, you know each and every one of us individually. You know each and every one who are watching at home right now. And Lord, I just pray that you hear the hearts and minds of your people now. You know what they need you for right now, Lord God. You know the prayers of their hearts. And Lord, we just pray that your comforting spirit will just be lavished upon them right now. Whatever it is that is ailing them, whatever it is that they are thanking you for, whatever it is they are petitioning you for right now, Lord God, I just pray that you hear each and every prayer loud and clear. So we just pray for ourselves and our friends and families just now. And Father God, we finally just want to pray for the future. Lord, Scripture declares that everything is in your hands. And Lord God, we just want to thank you for that. So whatever the future holds in whatever capacity, whatever the future holds for our nation and for the world in transitioning to some form of normality, we just pray, Lord, that everything remains in your hands. And Lord, everything will be done according to your will. May your will be done, Lord God. That is our sincere prayer. So, Father God, as we just take a moment now just to pause, reflect, and ponder what we just pray for right now, may you draw close to us just now, Lord God. Lord, that everything you do and everything that you will continue to do, may you be with us throughout the rest of this meeting, drawing close to our hearts and our minds, and may you draw close to us through this very, very significant week of Holy Week. May you draw close to us through this week and beyond, and we pray everything in your precious holy name just now, Lord God. Amen. Amen. And friends, do be assured of our sincere prayers for you. And likewise, we would appreciate your prayers for us in how we engage with God's people through the community of Woods Beach and beyond. We're now just going to be having a short illustration, a short video from Saddleback Kids Production. And I use these resources continually for primary school ministries because Sometimes even the most simplest of messages can be the most profound. And actually, I must confess, friends, I use these videos for my own reflection sometimes because of just how engaging you can be. So we're just going to be watching a short video on the importance of Palm Sunday. I encourage you now to just draw your attention to the screen.
told them to just say, the Lord needs it, and we'll return it soon. So the disciples did what Jesus said, and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem, and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset, and they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into tears. So the people kept on singing, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, Who is this? And the crowds replied, It's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry, just as God said he would many years before. That is, that is Palm Sunday in an otherwise joyous nutshell. And as I said, I use these clips all throughout primary school ministries when we're able to do such things. Because as I said, there's nothing more simpler and more pure than just a simple message directed to children. I confess, I, I indulge myself in such messages. But that is Palm Sunday explained quite adequately. We're now going to be having another song before we just look at God's word together. And though this song is directly associated with Monday, Thursday, and the Last Supper, there's such a significance behind Song of Sacraments in how Jesus can still be relevant in our lives, how we can be Christ's broken bread. And in the concept and in the context of our meeting today to look, I just encourage you now just to let this song again wash over you, radiate in our hearts, and worship together, friends. So if you have a songbook, it is 610 in the songbook. But otherwise, let's continue to worship together.
community, the wider church community that is, is just the support for one another and allowing us to share each other's songs. And my credit and thanks do go to all those who have willingly shared their work and their music for us to enjoy in fellowship. And that particular piece, my thanks again goes to my session mate, Lieutenant Jill Creedy. It's always a blessing when we're able to share through the sharing of songs. What a blessing that is. Now, the event of Palm Sunday, the event of to look, is so much a part of this day. Palm Sunday, as you might know, well know, is recorded in all four Gospels. But for this particular meeting, I'm going to be reading from Matthew's Gospel. And though we've had the cartoon version of it, I'm just going to be reading the biblical version of it. So if you do have your Bibles, I just encourage you to turn to Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. So that's Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And the word says, As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on the head. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there, with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, The Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was the centre of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God! For the Son of David, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? they asked. And the crowds replied, It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And may God add blessings to his words this day. Amen. I just want to ask each of you a question. I want you just to think of parades, exhibits, processions, or shows. Whatever the word you use to describe them, I don't actually know what, which is American, which is English. I'm sure Adrian will tell me afterwards. But whatever the word you describe as such events, they always evoke for me a sense of sincere joy, sincere happiness, euphoria. Almost that sense that it's palpable, almost that sense that it's infectious. I want you just to think of an event where it's been that physically infectious. The sense of joy, the sense of happiness a parade or a procession will bring. I want to think of all that in terms of Easter. And I really wish somehow that all of us can go to Jerusalem and relive the events of this tremendous day, friends. If we could all just go and relive this tremendous day, how exciting it would be to be a part of the crowds and walk down that winding road from the Mount of Olives, past the Garden of Gethsemane, across the Kidron Valley, and up through the Great Eastern Gate into the city of Jerusalem. Imagine it. <laughs> well, for me personally, it would bring me much joy. I should imagine given our lifestyle this last year of lockdown, not being able to go places, not being able to do things, I'm going to speak for myself and say, I'm sure it's going to be equally enjoyable for all of you. Just imagine that. Oh, I really wish that we can be part of such a parade. It'll be a parade that we will never forget. I'm absolutely sure. And there is lots to consider about this Palm Sunday. Lots of things to look at when we think of the theme of to look. But the main thing to focus on is what this means for us, the significance of the start of this Holy Week, and what it means in our relationship 
through what Jesus will do in this life-changing event for all of humanity. And there's just a few things that we're going to be looking at in regards to look. And if you do have your Bibles on you, I'll just encourage you just to look over this passage again and again and again, because there's just so much richness to it. I should probably, I've been giving my uh, cameraman mixed signals, though he's looking to look at the board friends, so I'll start to see him poised for, <laughs> for, a, uh, for a click there. But no, I'll just encourage you now just to look into your Bibles and just really absorb the atmosphere of this. The first thing to look at, friends, is look at the crowds. Now, just to give you a bit of context here, the event of Passover, which our video hopes so helpfully illustrated, it is the biggest event of the year for the Israelites. It sets the celebration for the liberation from slavery that the Jewish people had at the hands of Pharaoh. It celebrates that liberation, that freedom. So, basically, to put it into context, friends, it is the biggest party of the year, and hundreds of thousands of people will be gathering from all over the place. Just imagine that atmosphere. And all of these people were centered around Jesus. And there is two crowds to consider here. Not just those of the city, but those coming in with Jesus. This was the joining of two crowds, thunderously in an uproar, at the celebration of the arrival of the king. I don't know what the modern day context would that be, but it would be a parade and a celebration for the ages. This was the real deal. And they were greeting Jesus wildly, as the word suggests. They were shouting, Hosanna. Hosanna is a Hebrew term for say now. And the reason why all these people were celebrating the arrival of the king was because they had thought that Jesus would liberate them from Roman captivity, that they would do an uprising to the Romans, that he was this victorious king and warrior. Finally, they thought, no longer under Roman tyranny. But as we know, that isn't quite the context of the Jesus' arrival. But this is what the people had thought. That he came to save now. Hosanna, to save now. And despite the, well, oh, should we say, for lack of a better word, unenthusiastic response of the officials and the authorities, they were amidst a very lively crowd. So, friends, look at the crowd when you look at this passage. Secondly, is to look at Jesus himself. And I know we, we look at this constantly every week, of course we look at Jesus. There's so much to look at regarding Jesus, of course there is. But there is something significant about how he sent for the donkey. He did this so he could speak over the multitudes of the uproaring crowd. He did this purposely. And just like the context of Passover, the context of the donkey is equally important. The donkey is a significant animal, despite being of lowly status. The donkey carried kings, it carried princes, and it carried judges in the name of peace. Now, it's hard to envision such a thing in the modern day because donkeys would incite more laughter than all compared to the likes of a horse. And yet, it was a significant animal for Jesus. It had fulfilled the prophecy set forth in Zechariah. 9 verse 9. I'm just going to read that prophecy now. Zechariah 9 9 says this Rejoice, O people of Zion! Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem! Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey. Riding on a donkey's colt. Now, Bear in mind, this particular reading was a good 400 years before the arrival of Jesus. And because the Jewish people had been so scholared in the ways of the Old Testament, they thought, yes, it is finally happening. He is, look, the king is arriving on the donkey, as the scriptures had prophesied. So, of course, they're going to be excited about that. But it is the fact that Jesus is purposely fulfilling the prophecy, remaining humble, arriving into Jerusalem to fulfill this prophecy and to speak over the crowds. Jesus knew what he was doing, of course he does, he's the Messiah. But Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. 
So I want you to look at Jesus and how he purposely fulfilled that prophecy. Thirdly, is to look at the donkey owners themselves. You may, you may think that is a rather odd point to look at, but friends, I want you to pay close attention to the donkey owners and what they do in this significant chapter. But there is a lot to consider here. We've spoken of the context already of the donkey being an animal of important status, but also the, an the animal here, the donkey, is of huge, huge monetary value in the modern day. I think the modern day equivalent would be a brand new Range Rover Sport, for example, a brand new car. It is something immeasurably invaluable, doing tasks like farming, doing tasks like transport, tasks and needs that people wouldn't be able to do by themselves. If you were to own a donkey in ancient Jerusalem, then you were in a pretty good position. You were in a good position if you were to own such animals of not only biblical prestige, but also of practicality and uses. It is the equivalent of owning the latest car. Now the one thing to consider here is the donkey owners have been giving of their very best for Jesus, their best and their most. As the video suggests, as the scripture suggests, he is giving them to them. They are giving their donkey and their colt to them willingly, something of huge value. Just imagine that. I want to ask you that question. What is your most treasured item or possession? Would you be willingly giving up your car? Would you willingly give up your house in the name of the Lord? And of course, if it were prophesied or if it were abundantly clear, then of course we would for Jesus. But that is a hard ask to give up such things. So when we look at Palm Sunday, I encourage you to look at the donkey owners and for the grace and for the worship they have for Jesus. The verse 3 says, if anyone asks what you are doing, Jesus says, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. Jesus knew this somehow. And true to his word, they had willingly gave the disciples the donkeys. Remember, it is the giving of their best and their most to Jesus. And if Jesus says, I need that, would you give yours? It's a question for us all, isn't it? All he requires of us, friends, is faith in him, not the works or the possessions of ourselves, but he merely requires that we have faith in him, for whosoever will may be saved. And finally, is to look at the donkey, the donkey himself. And we did a quick comparison between the likes of the horse and the likes of the donkey. But now we're just going to unpack that a little bit. The horse, you think of a horse and you think of majestic, long flowing mane, robust physique, slow motion cameras. These are considered beautiful animals. I want you to take that slow motion camera and imagine a donkey running. I'm just, I'm just going to be thinking about it. Donkeys aren't graceful creatures, inciting more laughter than all having a mane more resembling lockdown hair than that of a long, shiny mane of a horse. The comparison between the two animals is quite extraordinary. But yet, the donkey was at the center of the parade, carrying the King of Kings, and has been an important part of scripture all throughout the Bible. It had taught a valuable lesson to Balaam in Numbers 22. He had carried Mary from Nazareth to Bethlehem at the birth of Jesus. He had carried Jesus in the last part of his life. It may not compare to a, to a horse in some regard, but make no mistake, friends, it had a significant role in this particular week. And just to illustrate this, I'm going to be taking the leaf out of Adrian's book, and I come across this short story illustrating just this, and it's called Only a Donkey. So, someone had wrote a fanciful sequel to this, and it was called Only a Donkey. And it says this, The donkey awakens, his mind still savouring the afterglow of the most exciting day of his life. Never before had he felt such a rush of pleasure and pride. 
He walked into town and found a group of people by the well. I'll show myself to them, he thought. But they didn't notice him. They went on drawing water and paid him no mind. Throw your garments down, he said crossly. Don't you know who I am? They just looked at him in amazement. Someone slapped him on the side and ordered him to move on. Miserable heathens, he muttered to himself. I'll just go into the market where the good people are. They will remember me. But the same thing happened. No one paid any attention to the donkey as he strutted down the main street of the front of the marketplace. The palm branches, where are the palm branches? He shouted. Yesterday, you waved palm branches. Hurt and confused, the donkey returned home to his mother. Foolish child, she said gently. Don't you realize that without him, you are just an ordinary donkey? Without him, you are just an ordinary donkey. Now, if this story were to be factual, I should imagine those words would be sinking deep into the donkey's mind just now. Without him, you are just an ordinary donkey. If I were to ever have a parade or a procession in my name, it would only be because Jesus sits upon the throne of my life, friends. Because, like the donkey, without Jesus, I am nothing. I am nothing without Jesus in my life. And should I be thrown in a parade for whatever reason, it will be because Jesus sits upon the throne of my life just now, friends. And I promise you, I praise God for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the life-changing difference Jesus makes in our lives. And this story of being only just a donkey is abundantly clear that without Jesus, life is mere, a mere husk or a mere shadow of the blessing that it could be. And I just encourage you, friends, I encourage you, are we like the donkey? Are we needing Jesus to be at the throne of our lives to have any form of blessing in a full abundance? Don't get me wrong, life does have its blessings. But take it from me, you notice those blessings more abundantly when Jesus is ever present in your life. And I say again, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God for the blessings he has. Now, just to wrap up, I challenge you just to look. We've looked at the crowds, we've looked at Jesus, we've looked at the donkey and the donkey owners. But there is the most important part we need to look at now, friends, and that is we need to look at ourselves. Are we like the Pharisees, feeling fear or rebuking Jesus, as the modern day world would do? Or are we like the donkeys, giving our very most and giving our very best for the glory of the King? The message of the church today is clear. The Lord needs you, and the Lord needs it. So friends, will you invite him into your hearts today? Will you be a part of the greatest parade in history, the parade, the fellowship of Christian believers? Something to consider as we just approach this holy week. For friends, our hearts will radiate with Hosanna and our palms, palm branches will be waving in abundance for the glory of the King rests abundantly on the throne of our lives, if we but allow him to do so. We're going to be just worshipping now just to reflect these important points, and as we focus on the theme of to look, I encourage you to look at yourselves just now, friends, and we're going to be singing a song together, Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. And yes, this is more commonly shown at Easter weekend itself, but friends, these words still remain true, whatever Sunday of the year it is. We praise the name of the Lord, our God, forevermore. For he sits, he, he sits at the seat of the throne. I just encourage you now just to worship just now. Let this song just wash over you as we just worship. Oh, praise his name.
Thanks for watching.
Lord, we praise your name. We praise Jesus, who is at the throne of our lives. And Father God, this Palm Sunday and beyond, help us to just fix our eyes on you, to look at ourselves, to look at your word, and to look at the blessings that you have in store for us, Lord God. I pray for each one of my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ watching just now, and that you may radiate in our, in our hearts. We pray these things in your precious name, Lord God. Amen. Amen. And now we're just going to be sharing a benediction. I'm taking this benediction both from John's Gospel and also from the songbook, which complement each other quite nicely. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. O oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. And may we radiate that sense of victory in wherever we go now. So friends, I encourage you to just look, to be blessed, and may God just bless you.